Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, metabolicdoc.com and anabolicdoc.com. Tom is the author of America on Steroids, A Time to Heal. You can get that at either of those websites or on amazon.com. Dr. O'Connor, how are you, sir? Excellent, Ron. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ron. How are you? Good. It's a cold, cold few days in the United States of America. Goodness Man, gracious. it's brutal up here. Negative three or four overnight here in Connecticut in some places. Colder in most of the Midwest than it is in Antarctica right now. That is a fact. Wow. Brutal. So uh, you are, you've you been doing this series on your channel, Anabolic Doc, uh, doing a different drug every time, and it's spectacularly popular. People love these videos. Uh, the latest one was called Anavar Wonder Steroid. Uh, very informative. It's got a lot of views, a lot of comments. You know, people want to hear about drugs. Unfortunately, you make videos about how to live longer and be healthy, and people are like, eh. Then you put out one about trend, ah, trend. People go nuts. It's amazing. <laughs> Over 200,000 views in like two weeks. That's awesome. My, 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 my car, how to avoid a heart attack video has like, I don't know, like two, two views. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, like maybe 5,000 views. I mean, I can't, I can't believe it. Of course I believe it. Exactly. Me heads. You me Drop. heads. So you went into the science, the history of Anavar quite a bit. Obviously, everybody, go to Anabolic Doc YouTube channel. Check out that video for the full science and all that behind it. Um, but I, I, of course, try to put my own spin because I don't want to just copy your videos. That's, that's even lamer than I usually am. So uh, I, I want to start talking about why, how did this drug get such a reputation as being for only women? Because, you know, you're slightly, you're not much older than me, but you were, you were in the powerlifting community and you were around when people were still getting the legit pharma grade Anavar from Searle, the tabs. And from what I understand, even though it's considered like a girl drug now, was that and has that always been a very popular drug with the in the powerlifting community? Are you kidding me? This is this the biggest. I won't say any names, but I mean, I've interviewed that I've taken care of some of the top powerlifters. I'm kind of giving away right there the names in the 1970s. Mm. The strongest men in the world. I mean, some of the numbers. Legitimately, still stand very close today. Of course, they've all been surpassed because of the gear lifting and the shirts and all this kind of stuff. And but you know what? Some of those top guys, testosterone, D ball, or one of the guys that's literally one of the strongest ever in the world. He liked testosterone, Sustanon 250, and 80 milligrams of Anavar. 80 milligrams of Anavar. Wow. I'm not kidding. Wow. I mean, that's all he. That's all he did. Wow. Uh, I mean, and he can't, he's not bullshitting because they didn't have, he didn't do growth back then. He actually smoked cigarettes. I don't want to give the guy away, but it's just like, he's just a super strong guy. And he said, Anavar is by far the strongest strength drug. Hmm. And he had to keep his weight, you know, cause he was competing in different weight groups, obviously where he had to weigh in. So he didn't want to be big and bloated. Hmm. So testosterone and Anavar, that's a strength combo, man. So if they were coming in the little, uh, you know, the, the most popular form was the, the Searle tablets were two and a half yeah. milligrams. So do the math. Yeah. He was he was doing like 30, 35 tabs a day at some 80 like. milligrams of Anavar. I mean, that's what guys do now, right? That's that's the dose, well, 10 milligrams. See, that's the thing is a lot of guys don't do Anavar because it's so expensive compared to other orals. And, you know, if you're going to use, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's stronger on a per milligram basis, I believe. Yeah, than, oh, than, yeah. Than anything oh, else. But oh, my God. I mean, so if – I don't want this to become a how to use steroids because I know you're not going to you're not gonna get involved in that conversation. But if someone's using, like, 50, 75 milligrams of, of D-ball or Anadrol a day, would, would you think, theoretically, they would get the same results from half that amount of Anavar? It, it, there's so many variables involved, but Anavar, real Anavar – Yeah is I think no one's going to argue that it's it's a it's a strength drug. I mean, you're just your muscles, your tendons, we know secondarily the tendons can tear, right? On Winstrol, Anavar. I take care of some of the strongest men in the world. So, this is not bullshit. This is just history. Yeah. And it's just like and it's it goes to show you that if you're a really strong man and you're training re legitimately like the old school way where they're not just jumping on gear. Sorry, that's just not how it used to be. They would ease into a little bit of Anavar, a little bit of test, you know, D-ball, obviously, Anadrol, 
Decadrabolin back in the day. Yeah. Forget Parabolin and Trend. That was out there too. But these guys definitely did that at a certain point. But these are men that did this for, for up into their 30s and 40s. Some of them actually don't really even have, they didn't really have serious medical issues. I, again, but it, you don't, don't, don't do it. I mean, and, and, and again, most of those guys in the end, when they came to see me in their 50s and 60s and 70s, because I've been doing this for over 15 years, and they came in the beginning when I was writing for you guys, thank you so much, Muscular Development, 2009, and these guys are in their 50s and 60s at that time, so you can imagine that those are the guys that were around 40s to 60s yeah. at that, in, in, the, in, the, in 2010, 2012, so... And they just told me what they did and what they, they would go on and off. And they, they would just cruise on SUS 250. One CC is SUS 250. They would hold their strength pretty damn well. And they told me that they would, they would go back on the orals combined with the te they They'd ramp everything up. And then they would do it really not so much to gain so much organic strength. They would do it, they told me, to make the lifts happen in competition. Hmm. Now, you know what that means? No. That means like... You're not using so much gear that you're just going some alarming number that's going to be so outlandishly out of your league because compared to what is happening in powerlifting today, they had to lift if they were doing single ply or most of the stuff is raw. We're talking raw numbers mm. back in the 70s and stuff, obviously, and all raw. And until Ted Arcidi came along in the 1980s with a single pie shirt, he did 705 pounds. Ted yes. Arcidi. My old, uh, my old substitute English teacher from seven. That's grade. right. I freaking love that. Up in New Hampshire, Massachusetts. I trained with Ted. Yeah. And I'm not going to say any more than that. Ted is a freaking amazing guy. Back in the 1990s, you know, I met Ted and I was with Ted. And, you know, so back in the day, guys were doing tests in Anavar, D-Ball, Androl. They were, they were going on. They were going on and off and they cruise on test. A lot of them, some would come off completely. Their gains were so legitimate hmm. that they wouldn't lose all. It's true, though. And then wow. they, would, they would gain, but they would tell me that they would use the drug to shore up the, the, their opening and their competition lifts. And by the grace of God, maybe they're going to go on the second or third attempt a 5% a or a small PR. And, and that's power. That's how we do powerlifting. You don't, you don't open up with you know, cowboy stuff, and you don't open up with your best bench. You don't open up with this huge nut. And guys who do that, they bomb out. Mm. So these are, these are also legitimate powerlifters that have been, they were competing for years upon years upon years. Mm. So they, they didn't want, and again, and they, they all use steroids, but genetically they were also so strong naturally, and they were gifted Olympic lifters, some of these guys, mm. back in the 50s and stuff, 60s. Yeah. I mean, so they like Anavar. They they told me specifically, and then some guys didn't like Anavar. So it was D ball or Anadrol, but it, but Anavar. This one particular man who's super famous and super amazing, who's since passed on, is was like Anavar was my drug, Doc. Hmm. Wow, yeah. Because like I like I said, he, I, when you hear about it now, it's usually in reference to women using it. But I distinctly remember the the health club I worked at when I was nineteen twenty years old and. West Newton, Mass, no longer there. It's where I met my wife. One of the guys who was uh, managed, he managed uh, the men's days. The club had men's days and women's days. Oh, it's, my God. We're like back in the Stone Age here. Anyway, big dude, you know, a little little chunky at that time, but he was a big, big husky guy. He was like probably about six foot, 270, 280, and uh, looked like looked like an ex-football player, and he was. He was an ex-college football player. At this time, he was already in his, like, mid to late 30s. But he was telling me, oh, you know what drug I used to – I, I was still natural, but I would. I, it was like a, a morbid curiosity. I would talk to guys about the drugs, you know, in my mind, like maybe someday. But anyway, he said Anavar. I loved Anavar. He goes, me and my buddies back in the college football, we'd 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 get so hyped up, we'd go out drinking, and then we'd go out and tip cars over. You know, two or three of us would just go tip over like ten or twelve cars in a night. And I said Anavar, Anavar, isn't that what like girls use? I don't. Know, I didn't get it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I wanted to run down just a couple of unique properties that you talked about in the video that uh, that makes this a wonder steroid. It's six times more anabolic than testosterone, so it has almost none of the androgenic properties. Uh, it does not aromatize, so you get no water retention, and it's not metabolized in the liver, which is crazy for an oral steroid. That that that's what, and even I learned this many many years ago, and it, and then I could back this up that. 
the men I've seen use Anavar and their transaminases, the LFTs, they go up, you know, through the roof. And the HDL goes down. I saw a new guy today. I talked to him and I saw his labs, his HDL was in the 20s. And he was like, Doc, I'll preface that was on, I don't know, 20 milligrams of Anavar. And so there it is. So it, it affects it. Now I'm moving into a level where I'm understanding there are effects on paper. And I mean, none of this is good. Like you don't want to take it. How much risk? It's all about this. How much risk do you want to take? Mm. So this is the only animal. And I can't, I mean, the, the, it's because of the second, uh, it's because of that second change in that, and, and, and that ring, that, that classic steroid ring, not the methyl, not the, the, the 17 alpha alkylated, that methylation. It's because of the other structural change that it processes mainly through renal it's cleared through the kidneys. This is amazing stuff. And it's, it's one of the only ones that tr that's truly does that. But you will see that it does process to some degree through the hepatic clearance. But it, the, the data, and this is, uh, the, Bill Llewellyn did a lot of research supporting this. And, and there's articles in his book. And then I researched stuff, of course, on the internet with PubMed. Pub, pub med. Oh, and then, of course, I have all my thousands of anecdotal questions from men. Yeah. So it, it's really, it, it, there's no blessing on it. But in the end, if you lived on it long enough and long enough and long enough, where there has been people using this drug for years and years, yeah. back in the 70s, those studies are there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not prospective double blinded. They're just studies that are there and they have anecdotal information versus anadrol where it was horrible and deball on the on the liver with with cyst and and what's called cholestatic failure where the liver gets frozen up and you get jaundice so you get you know yellow mm. and that's called cholestatic liver the, the, it's, there's a different levels of failure to the liver it's super complicated well, so a good question now uh, this is a follow-up question based on what you just said uh, this was a comment on your video a guy named Abe Javadi it says, great video, Doc. Curiosity question. If Anavar is mostly metabolized through the kidneys, have you noticed any increase in the rate of renal disease among users of this stuff? So, I have not, hmm. but there's no study on this. But that's a, that's a, these are very, now we're into some amazing questions. But then again, if you look at, see, this is why we need to do a registry. And for anyone out there, any people, any academic people watching me in the whole world, Australia's had some kick in my tires for an academic study. I want a real, I, I have, no one in the world has more patient data than I have. Hmm. Every day, I, I may take in two or three new patients. Every day. Yeah. I've been doing this since 2000, really 2003. The but I have data, I have data from 2005. Hmm. Patient data. So if anyone, I, we need to do a legitimate registry study. And the guys at Harvard were interested in doing it. And then our relations just went by the wayside because I just don't, I, I, I just want to, I want someone, you know, I don't want, I don't need the big name. I, I don't need the big name. I, I'm a little guy and I, I don't mind staying that way. But I, no one has more, no one in this world has more clinical data on men using steroids. So we don't know. It looks like to me that I've just never seen the clinical failure of the kidneys on just some, a guy who's using some tests in Anavar. I'm not giving that a blessing. Right. But it could be out there. I've seen heart attacks on men because men have heart attacks without steroids. Right. So, so you know, but the the heart the, the the kidney failure guys. Here's what it, let me let me talk about that because that's what this show is really to give information to help heal people and to prevent disease. If you have if you have genetics for kidney disease, if you're hypertensive, if maybe you're an African American and you have focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in your family gene line, hmm. you better be careful. Because apples don't fall far from trees when it comes to genetics. That's why good doctors take family history. Tell me about your mother. Tell me about your father. Tell me about your sister and brothers and so on and so forth. So you could predict and then we could do clinical stuff. We could, we could go beyond that now with genetics. And so we could check for breast cancer right with genes now for people. So, I mean, come on. So family history is the old crude genetic analysis. Right. What's your genetics? And if you have family history of kidney disease, an early, early um, end-stage kidney failure from diabetes or hypertension, and you think you're going to go on steroids, you're going to prop. This is the I have, I don't know, 30 guys that I've taken care of, maybe up to 50. I have three or four guys right now, maybe half a dozen that are on the way to dialysis right now. No, jeez. 
are, so, are so they all are they all former steroid users or no? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So yeah. so but 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 why them versus the other guy? I, I'm trying to figure it. I mean, some of these guys didn't even do that many steroids. So hmm. they just had bad genes and they pushed it with the stick. Come on. Hmm. So it's common sense. There's a lot of common sense going on, but we need a study. And I know the question in the end, you asked me, does Anavar cause kidney failure? It runs through the kidney. What a great question. I thought of that too. I think, Jesus Christ, we're going through the kidney. How come I don't see kidney failure on these guys? Well, maybe, maybe the guys that use Anavar, they want to be like women. They, 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 they want to be very careful. So if you do a little Anavar and a little, ta you know, it's not going to, I mean, smoke a few cigarettes a day, you probably won't get, look. I'm, try, I'm trying to be honest for everyone. So maybe they're softer guys in that they don't want to take more risks. So if you're a low risk guy, you're going to use Anavar. So you're probably not going to use much of it and you're, and you're not going to do it for long, right? But 80 milligrams of Anavar a day for like nine months out of the Woo! year. Mm, you might you're going to have liver cysts. You might have a but problem. the guy, the, the guy that did that, that I took care of in the end of his life, I took care of this man in the end of his life. I was his doctor among other doctors. His heart was good. Wow. His kidneys were good and his liver was good. Wow. I won't say what he died from. I mean, it was unbelievable. So there, this is just a conundrum. But if you're if you're if you're a worry ward and you don't want to take any risks with your health, which you should be, hmm. you obviously don't want to do any steroids ever, right? Well, the next question on there was I don't know, there's a lot of there's a lot of comments on that. A lot of them aren't even questions. They're just like bantering back and forth with each other. But True. Uh, a guy named Giddy. Boz? I don't know. So in your opinion, is Anavar the safest steroid? I assume we're going to have to quantify that and say the safest <laughs> oral steroid because injectable, I would, in, in my little bro science mind, is always safer, comparatively speaking, than orals. Well, you know, what? Well, that's a good question. I don't have to preface it and, and have, I feel like I don't need to, to say, dis, you know, my disclaimer because disclaimer. disclaimers are always there. So Anavar came into the world because John Ziegler, no, that was D-Ball, sorry. Right. Anavar came into the world similar to D-Ball to be an oral agent. They don't call it oral agents. It was a medicine that had properties of helping people heal that had debilitation, hmm. Osteo postmenopausal osteoporosis. Uh, if you had used another steroid called prednisone or corticosteroids, solumedrol long enough and your bones are broken down and you're wasted from a, from a corticosteroid, they thought we could use this. That was interesting. Hmm. Burns. If you're if you're burned in an ice, we we use it today for that. Wow. It's legitimate. If you don't use Anavar on a burn patient, you're you're it's medical malpractice. I mean, you're you're unethical. You you don't you're not you're 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 not practicing sound medicine up with evidence. But you don't know what you're doing. Hmm. So, and I've caught I've caught a place where I said you should use some Anavar, and they the the ICU in the burn center, hmm. the chief, he said, don't worry, doc, we're on top of this, hmm. and they used Anavar. And, and they actually gave him testosterone too, and they got him. And he's actually doing. He he actually he almost died from sepsis and burns. And you die from infection when you're burned like that. Did, you die from overwhelm. Did you say in your video that Anavar went out of production for a period of time? So well, well, yeah, well, yeah. If you read Bill Llewellyn's book on that, I went. I read all over the internet and PubMed and all these things I read for background. The truth is that it was put out. Of, they stopped it for political reasons and for competition. We don't even did it. I'm still asking myself today: Is there medical beyond the burn center? Yeah. It, it, you see that it's it's theoretically you could write. You were supposed to use this medicine for someone who is wasted, who is cachectic, who has recovery after surgery, and they're they're. I I don't use it. I don't use my, hey, my for my mom and for the for the legislatures and for the for the the public health people. I don't write for this medicine, never have, never will. Hmm. But should we? I mean, is it a safe, this is pathetic. There's, it, it was taken off the market, not because it wasn't working, it, or not because the studies show it was hurting regular people. Yeah. And how many people did it help? I mean, if you did it for a short period and they, you got them out of the burn center, not to mention if they had a hip fracture in their, in their they can't walk and they're weak and you know people use it all the time on their own against medical advice because they they come out of surgical this is younger people with with orthopedic injuries i talked to a guy today his history was his end of our history was you know what i broke my uh hip or these are like i have wild amateur 
motocross racers and you know i have you know they're not bodybuilders i have regular men and he goes you know i broke my collarbone and i destroyed my arm and i did some anivar whoo it's phenomenal hmm. and i was like wow that's very interesting and this was years ago and he goes well he goes i did it for a while and i stopped it did help me recover i got to the point where i recovered and my doctor actually knew that i did it but he could didn't say yes this is an orthopedic doctor and so we don't know medically is it the safest, Ron? It could be, but it's not as toxic as, I can tell you this, it's not as toxic as Dianabol or Anadrol. No, it, it did make, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it made a huge comeback uh, when AIDS patients were starting to be diagnosed with it to combat the wasting syndrome. Age-related, age-related cachexia and age-related sarcopenia. And today, AIDS patients, and I agree with it, are prescribed, although I don't have any, I've never have, I never have, I don't, I wouldn't turn them down. I mean, they, 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 they use testosterone, growth hormone, and there are doctors that write for Anivar for these men all day long. I've seen it. I just, I've seen them come into my office transiently for consultations from LA and, and Florida. And I've been doing this for over 10 years, as everyone knows, and I've helped them and I, they have particular questions for me. And they have good doctors in LA and, and th that are, these are infectious disease experts, by the way, and they're prescribing steroids for these men and no one has a problem with it. No, it's, it's it, funny that the actual trade name for Anivar, uh, the, they, you know, the copyright expired, the patent or trademark, whatever expired yeah. in uh, high tech pharmaceuticals, who's a huge sponsor of muscular development. So nothing but good things to say about them. They have a product called Anivar now and they can legally, you know, they, I think there's one called Dianabol, there's one called Anivar, because the, the actual pharmaceutical companies let the patents, the trademarks expire wow. many, many years ago. Wow, wow. So the, the only uh, legit pharmaceutical an Anivar being produced in the United States, I don't know which company, but you talked about in the video, it's, it's called Oxandrin is the trade name, right? Yeah. I, see, I, I, this is, when, I, when I'm reading that, I'm just reading directly off of the references that I discovered. So Anivar is legitimate. In America, I mean, it's still in America. It's used medically. Again, burn, burn centers use it regularly. They have to because it works. It saves lives. And there are infectious disease and AIDS experts that are, you know, doctors that are using it for AIDS wasting. And there's also people in between that are using this and maybe it does make a comeback. I, as the antibiotic doc, have to be very careful that don't come to me for it because I'm not ever going to take a risk of losing my license or getting investigated. It's never going to happen. I take care. If you're suffering from steroids, your testosterone is going to be probably shut down and affected. I will evaluate you and see if I decide, if we decide together to put a plan together to take care of you. If you have a heart attack or kidney disease or any one of these other issues, I'm also good on that stuff too because I'll help you with other doctors coordinate a plan. There was a funny, a funny comment. I didn't print it out here, but... A guy wanted to know if Anivar is good to use during my PCT, and I actually chimed in, probably shouldn't have, it's your page, but your YouTube page, but I said, Thank you. you'd still be on steroids, you dumbass. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's not going to work. I mean, that's, that's not going to work. What steroids should I use while I'm, on, while I'm doing PCT? I just love all the questions. And first of all, thank you so much for everyone for, for supporting me, and it's hard to say fans, kind of seems weird, my fans, my supporters. You do have fans. I appreciate it. And I love what I do. Every day is a blessing. And I just want to keep doing what I do. So I thank everyone. It's amazing the millions and millions of people that are on steroids and that are interested in steroids. And I work today with another drug rehab somewhere in America where a man is in a f rehab facility suffering from some psychiatric issues and he had uh, steroids involved. And now these doctors are contacting me because when they Google steroid doctor or expert steroid doc, they get me. And then we had another con. So I have literally like right now, probably half a dozen men that are in America that are at inside rehabs that have a comorbid where they have some, some psychiatric, it's all like depression and suicide stuff. And thank God they're okay. And all the men I'm working with, they're okay. They're getting better. But the psychiatrists are dealing with the depression and th they're doing with bipolar depression and depression, you know, traumatic brain injury and acute issues, psych psychosis and things. And then th they, the, they see that these men are on steroids, so many of them, and they just 
they and the guy the, the patient so many of them know me and they're like hey doc thank you so much or the family the one guy had his dad knew me and because he researched and he said can you guys please consult with dr tom o'connor he's the anabolic doc and in the beginning years ago they were like we're not calling the anabolic doc that's ridiculous <laughs> That's ridiculous. Wouldn't they call it? Would they call the metabolic dog? Is that? What I don't. I mean, you can call me whatever you want. So it's like so now they're calling and I'm putting in, you know. So then I'm doing. I'm telling them what to do for PCT. And you know what, man? The one there's one guy right now, and if his dad's watching, man, this guy's doing well, and I'm happy. And and the 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 guy from another place today called me the uh, the nurse practitioner because there's not all doctors. We're working with nurse practitioners a lot. And they're great. And he said, you know what? We're weaning some stuff down. And I go, how's he doing? And um, he goes, he's doing good. He's doing really good. He's really, he's really feeling great. We're doing it. Come on, Ron. What else matters? I've That's been waiting and waiting to read this to you. This is so hilarious. Uh, I'm going to say his name. I mean, it's on your comments, so it's, it's public uh, whatever. But uh, a guy named Michael W. says, this is, if, if this isn't a wonder steroid, I don't know what it is. It's got miraculous properties. I lost both of my testicles in a hang gliding accident. So I don't know what he says lost. I mean, were they? I don't know what he means exactly lost. But trauma, trauma. Okay, I was prescribed Anivar. About three years later, my testicles have grown back to about ninety percent <laughs> their original size. Wait, it gets better. Furthermore, there was actually a third partial testicle that grew, connected <laughs> to my left side. Hey, we could all use an extra ball. The doctor told me this is not totally unusual and is not dangerous in any way. So I guess I'm blessed, and I guess Anivar is a miracle drug. Highly recommended. Have you ever heard of anything like this? I don't know. Well, I thank that guy for that comment, <laughs> and I'd have to hear more about the details of this clinical case hmm. because I'm not going to put the guy down. I mean, obviously, I don't know. Hey, look, maybe his testicles were traumatized. What I would think is yeah. his testicles were traumatized, hang gliding. I've seen that. That's pretty ballsy stuff. Hmm. And he he crashed, obviously, and he – he had a trauma, yeah. you know, directly to his testicles, and they were damaged. And obviously, they weren't re they were not removed, right. and they were if shut. They were removed. They're, they're, they can't. You can't spontaneously grow. It's like no. a lizard loses its tail, grows a new no. tail. No, no, <laughs> no, no. So, so he didn't. His test his testicles like like I have a lot of men that have testicular that have had testicular cancer, yeah. and they've had what's called orchi orchiectomy, which is one. You know, they usually remove just one, not many. I've never heard of a man losing, yeah, good getting... Of, good friend of mine had one removed in my nephew. Yeah, just, they, oh, so so they, it's called a unilateral orchiectomy. I've had dozens, and I mean, and it's interesting for, and I don't want to launch off to this, you know, that that guy, that that, that he traumatized his testicles, and they went into a dormant, they, they atrophied and went dormant, and then maybe he did some Anivar, and coincidentally, in the post-period, his testicles kind of just grew back, because his pituitary gland reconnected and he just had the grace of God and his testicles came back to full size. And maybe Anivar did something with kind of shutting down his pituitary gland just enough and then the the the, the grow back, you know, the stiff if you shut your your pituitary gland down and hypothalamus with test with steroids, and then there is gonna be a point when you if you just blast it and then pull it right back. You're gonna have this boom. You're gonna have this huge, cert, yeah, hmm. of 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 luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone to your testicles. Maybe that's what that's brilliant. So okay. Anavar did that. Maybe I think you just figured out a very possible. I just had to work it through. Uh, I would be very remiss if I didn't read this one because this is, uh, like I said, it's a woman. It's a drug that's used widely, widely. I. I I don't know if there's any women competing today that don't use Anavar. They, they wow. love freaking wow. Anavar because they think it's harmless. They think it wow. strips the fat, builds muscle, and there's no possible side effects. No they, hair, no chin. They believe, no. they've been told by their dealers, by their coaches, whoever, that this is perfectly safe, no side effects, no damage, only good things are going to happen to you. But, Ron, when they have to, when, when these chicks, come on, you and I have been around the, you and I have been around the park here a little bit, yeah. they all have male androgenic side effects, Ron. Right. Now, why? This is probably a good reason why. Uh, obviously, Anavar can have virilization. It's a drug. It's it's a synthetic drug, steroid. But this guy says uh, his name was Based Papa. Based Pepe, I'm sorry. The biggest problem with Anavar is that much of the stuff available from underground labs is actually low-dose Dianabol. 
True. While real Anvar is already somewhat virilizing, I postulate that many women, many women experiencing wow. virilization have been sold fake gear and that it's, it's greed on the part of... I saw that comment, and you know what? I agree with him. Yeah. It's not Anavar, but Anavar is going to be less virilizing than Tren or D-Ball. Yeah. Well, maybe, well, D-Ball shouldn't be. D-Ball and Anavar were both conceived to be less androgenic. I mean, right? That was why they made that. So, but, it, but again, it's, there, is, there is some androgenicity versus a baseline. If, if this is your baseline as a woman, for, for secondary male sex characteristics, yeah. and you use tre you know, your testosterone, you're going to go, I have to keep it in the window here, right, so you can see it. You go here, but, you know, Anavar is going to be here. Right. So you're going to get some virilization, but not like testosterone, you know, suspension or, or SIP or, or Sussanon 250 or Enanthate. So no, no, not many chicks are doing tests, but they do Anavar, Winstraw, Primo, and they do it, and Decadurable, and I know what they do. They do it over and over, and they're going to be up like this versus baseline, and then depending on the exposure, length of time, the doses, her genetics, her propensity for for getting these reset. You know, some women lose hair quickly. I've had so many consults with women about the hair. I mean, it's like, you know, that's what they care about. And then I've seen other women where their hair is like phenomenal, and she's like, I've been doing steroids for 20 years. Wow. Yeah, most of the ones I know in that case, they wear wigs now. Their hairlines yep. hair up, up by their, uh, you know. True. Um, and, yeah. and, but there's genetics, and some women are just, I mean, come on. I mean, Ron, it's, it's, it's their, the women I find, from my observations, they tend to be very, very sensitive to steroids. Yeah. They get excellent results from doses of steroids that would do absolutely nothing for a man. True. Uh, I've seen so many women go on 10 milligrams of Anavar a day, and within two weeks, all of a sudden, they have shoulders. It's Never true. Had any delts in. Traps and shoulders. Traps yes. and shoulders. Yeah, but especially the shoulders. That's how I always know when a woman's on or off gear. The like, round. I could tell the shoulders come up. They go up and down. I go, oh, she's back on. Oh, she's off. Tour. Her shoulders are gone. It's like deflate. They inflate and deflate. It's a, the, just the, the lateral delts. Just those lateral delts. Right. Yep. But I, I have to also uh, make the connection that if they're getting better results from low results, they might also be getting more of the bad effects, you know, you know, 20 milligrams of Anavar a day probably wouldn't do anything negative toward a man except, you know, the liver enzymes, the HDL, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see hair loss. We wouldn't see the voice. True, it's probably some true, these, true. Some of these women. But like I said, the raw powder for Anavar is much, much more expensive than it is, it is. for D-Ball or even Winstrol. Uh, I've seen Anavar 10 milligram tabs go for as much as $3 a tablet. Absolutely. I told that my, yeah. So that's exactly right. It's like someone asked me that in another interview I did yesterday and I researched that and I found over two to three dollars yeah. yeah exactly so and then you don't even know that's why Roy test is important I guess because you wanna mm. you really are you really getting it I still can't get an answer from a chemist why is it so expensive why is that raw material why is that process yeah I just don't get it I, I don't know why the powders are but that's you know certain powders are very cheap and certain ones like Prima Bolin's very expensive drug to, to get. Yeah. Astron's more expensive. And Anavar, very expensive. So most of the, a lot of these women that are having the extreme virilization from Anavar probably weren't using Anavar. You know what, though, Ron? It's just great, though. It's, it's so common sense. It's got to be true. Uh, I gave you the top, the top funny comment. Can I give you the top hater comment that you got now? I'm a hater. Haters are going to hate, Ron. Oh, boy. This guy really hates. Uh, Mike Valdez. He's, uh, I, read, I read a bunch of his comments. He's almost 60 years old. So he said, this ad, he's calling your video an ad, is free advertising for his business. You come in or Skype, he doesn't examine, et cetera, and charges you. It's about money, not helping anyone. He's marketing to build his practice. He said so himself. This is essentially free advertising for his business. You come in or Skype and he charges you. It's a moneymaker. Shame on you for making money. Horrible person you are, doctor. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I mean, so you're desperate no. for patience. You've got like no patience, obviously. <laughs> I mean, that, that's okay. It's America. I mean, you know. So here's my response to Mr. Valdez. Yes. So when you go to a college, a high school football game, or you go to a college football game, or the NFL, on the sideline, there's there's a, there's going to be a couple of doctors on the sideline. Yeah. 
there's definitely going to be at least one, if not many, orthopedic surgeons. Hmm. Those are scumbags. What are they those orthopedic those orthopedic surgeons, shame on them. Right. They're going to and they're going to football games and they're just waiting for someone to get hurt so they can make money. I'll rest my case. <laughs> I, it was a silly comment that the guy made. I mean I mean it's just foolish, sir. You're fool you're foolish, sir, and that's okay. Everyone any, else should any position everyone. you could say you can that's make ridiculous. the moral argument that they're not they shouldn't make any money for helping people, for healing people. It should you know, be free. Well the truth of the matter is the truth of the matter is success in America, because it's obviously a great country, comes and people that are really successful, they don't initially go for money. Yeah. Money is secondarily, and it's that's what's happening in my life. And money's not even in the top five in my category. Mm -hmm. Number one is being a good physician and doing something that I really believe in, that I was I feel in the universe I was asked to do. Yeah. And then everything else is about taking care of your family. I mean, and, and if, being if a good you look person. at the body of work of your writing and your videos, I'm not kissing your ass, but the, bo the bulk of it is trying to keep pe people, especially people who have used or are using steroids, keeping them healthy, making sure that they have a better quality of life and live longer than they would otherwise because very few other physicians have the knowledge to, to be able to deal with the situations that uh, a steroid user, former steroid user is encountering. They're just not educated. They're ignorant about most of the effects, the long-term effects of these. All they know is, you know, what the media tells them for the most part, even though they're doctors. It's not, I don't think steroids are a major part of uh, med school. It's probably like five minutes. You go to the bath, take a bathroom break. You might have missed what, whatever they told you about steroids in med school. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to, to try to say that it's you're changing. not helping people, come on. Be real, Mike. But it's a haters, you know, I, I had, you know what, though, versus what I was 10 years ago or even a couple years ago, Yeah. for every hate, I got about 100 loves. Yeah. So I do thank everyone, and you got to have some haters, and you he's, you, you know, he'll, sir, you'll be okay. I'll, he'll probably want to come in as a patient sooner or later anyway, because, yeah. you know, I mean, the truth of the matter is, it is what it is, buddy. Don't worry about it. That's okay. Your, your, your point is well taken. Um, doctors charge money in America. I mean, he may, he probably gets paid and he needs to get, people need to get paid. Yeah. I mean, this isn't, we don't live in a commune uh, in Vermont in 1974 where, you know, you grow the tomatoes and I, uh, go get fetch the water from, it's not like that. This is, uh, the real world. Most uh, guys, most guys and bit the men I take care of are successful men. I take care of a lot of you know, successful business owners and they are just so tickled pink that I'm a successful man. They just... They really just want to be around. Success wants to be around success. Right. And 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 it always has to be ethical. Yeah. And th this is just what we're doing. And I'm having a great time, Ron. But I love it, Ron. Things are great, man. I thank you guys so much for doing this and allowing me to have my platform. So to wrap up the end of our discussion that we're having, uh, I feel it would be a much more widely used uh, drug by men if it wasn't so cost prohibitive. Uh, but it is. So a lot of guys, they're just on a budget and they decide, well, I can get a bottle of D-Ball for 60 bucks. So oh, there's a machine. My machine hasn't gone off yet, thank God. That's my, That's rare. So, I might as well. I Shut that the, down, please. I usually get the telemarketing calls while we're talking. But uh, 60 bucks for a bottle of D-Ball or 250 bucks for a bottle of Anavar, it's going to last you the same amount of time. I would probably go, with, I've gone with, I've never used Anavar, never, all these wow. years. It's the one thing because... I just don't want to pay the money for it. For what? If wow, wow, if wow. I to, yeah, I mean, if I'm worried about water bloat, I know what to use. It's not going to give me water bloat. You know, if I ever had used it, it would have been during prep, but I, I opted to spend the money on other items instead because it financially it just never made sense to me on a per milligram basis. It was that's incredible. I didn't realize that's, yeah, so many, it's Ron, outrageous. so many people, so many, I know you keep saying the women thing, yeah. so many men that come into me because men that come into me, they, they remember they're I'm selecting for a group of men that really care about their health despite using steroids. So, so what steroid are you going to use? If you care about your health, you're going to use Anavar. Yeah. You probably just use like, like that power to test a little bit of tests, a little bit of Anavar. That's it. So, so the, so the, every patient mainly that sees me, that's if they've most of them, I would say, yeah, they, they have a history of Anavar and 
test, and then they, they've, you know, I mean, some of the guys have veer off into into the hardcore land of trend and all. I mean, I have everyone. I have everything now. But it, it, it's interesting, and we do need to put research into studying these things, Ron. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I just can't believe where we are because the SARMs are not coming and the SARMs are not going to come for decades. You think they're, you think that's, uh, it seems to me like it's a dead end with SARMs. I don't think, I don't know. No, 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 no. The future of SARMs, no, no. If you look at the world, we've been doing, these steroids are what, 60, 70 years, these are 60, I mean, oh my, it's hard to believe. I'm 54. These steroids were in came into market before I was born a couple of years. Right. Call it 60 years. 60 years of steroids. We have nothing. We're still using old school, dirty testosterone today. It's all we have for, 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 for a replacement testosterone, correct? Right, yeah. We have, and forget growth hormone or insight. We, no, one's, no, one, no one does that. My legitimate men that are successful oh. that want to be on TRT, they, they don't do insulin and they don't even want a growth hormone. Because they, they just want to be on testosterone because they want to be horny and healthy. So, <laughs> so you know it's funny. You know it's true. So, so but the SARM, the, the companies are going to figure out how do you stimulate the receptors of the muscle for women and, and, and for older people. And legitimately, it's going to be abused. Uh, we'll have to work around it. And how do you do it so it's stay safe in the cardiac system and so on? SARMs, they just, they're going to get, they're going to, they're going to figure it out. But I'm telling you that we're bringing that to market through a phase two, one, two, and three phase human trials. We're talking 10 years, yeah. if not more. So today we have testosterone only. It, isn't that amazing? That's amazing to me. <laughs> we have multiple billion dollar drugs for cholesterol, diabetes, and cancer, and we still have testosterone today. It, it's it's amazing because if you watch television, and you don't go through the commercials, you actually watch commercials in primetime TV. I guess it doesn't matter. There's so there's a drug out there for everything. Diabetes. Everything. It's diabetes because America's obese and, and diabetic. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's diabetes and it's cancer. Hmm. That's the, those are the, those are the money markets. I mean, I'm just being honest. I'm just telling you what. If you're if you're talking to your financial marketing, you know your financial planner who does all the stock market stuff. Yeah, diabetes isn't going anywhere. It's 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 on the upswing. For sure. No, but 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 I'm telling you though, the SARMs and and muscle wasting and muscle protection is a huge multiple trillion dollar market. But the, the scientists can't figure out how to make these SARMs. They will. They will. I mean, they will. I mean, these supplement companies didn't have billions of dollars to work with and, you know, university trials and teams of chemists and doctors and I, these, these you know, big pharma companies. They're like small governments, basically. And, and, and the reason why, but they're going to come out of that because they're seeing the light, because the truth is that they need, to, it's a huge market because people are getting older and they're, they're wasting away yeah. just by getting, you know, just getting older and having osteoarthritis. And just they want to stay at home. So if you fall, you can get up and you'll be safer in your home. So uh, you're going to see it's going to come. Yeah, I mean, the baby boomers, they're the ones who really. That's me. Yeah. What's what's the cutoff year for that? I've never really known. 1964. Okay. Damn it. I missed it by five years. But uh, it's the baby boomers who are really driving this, everything that's anti-aging. Because they're getting older and they have money and they're like, shit, I don't want to be old. I don't want to look and feel old. <clears throat> the best thing we have for today, if, if, you, if you fit the bill, mm-hmm. if you're legitimately, you know, <clears throat> for tea, yep. it's testosterone. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> A 60-year-old drug, still, still the height of fashion. Isn't that amazing, though, Ron? It's, that's why I got to work around all the side effects with the cardiac and everything else. It's, it is interesting. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Doc, what is the next video they can check out on Anabolic Doc? What's that one going to be about? Next week, we're going to put out Winstrol. Yeah, Winnie. Winnie, okay. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. That, that's going to be a huge one, trust me. I, I predict that will be better be, than Anavar. Better. Everybody loves incredible. the Winstrol. <laughs> it's a, I can't believe what I've created. It's just, just this things. It's a freight train running away. Yeah. Well, everybody, if you want to see these full videos where Dr. O'Connor actually goes into the history, the pharmacology, all the science behind these drugs, 
You have to go to his channel, Anabolic Doc on YouTube, because this is just me and him bullshitting for like 40 minutes. You know, we get some science in there too, but we have a lot more fun. His is much more educational. You'll learn a lot more from his videos, so go check those out for sure. Get the book. Do all that stuff. Uh, keep watching Anabolic Doc channel on uh, YouTube. Please keep watching this channel, MuscularDevelopment.com. Doc, I can't wait to see your Winstraw video. It's going to be a winner. And I'll, I'll have a good Winstraw story for you, I promise. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> That'll be next week. All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. Ask the Anabolic Doc, and we'll see you next time.